Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. Hun King! Hun, you huskies! Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog Yukon King as they meet... The Challenge of the Yukon. (laughs) Try this first thing tomorrow morning. Treat yourself to the breakfast cereal shot from guns. That's the one and only Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice. Just pour out a bowl full, crisp and fresh, right from the big red and blue package. Add milk, top with your favorite fruit, and dive in. See if you ever tasted anything so swell as these giant, king-size kernels of premium wheat or rice shot from guns. Yes, tomorrow morning... (laughs) Enjoy this breakfast treat. Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. At Whitehorse in the Yukon Territory, the short summer was drawing to a close. There was a Christmas in the air that old-timers recognized as a forewarning of sudden freezing temperatures and heavy snows. But the main topic of conversation was of something far removed from the weather. Instead, men talked of a small, ruthless gang which was said to have crossed the border at Skagway. This gang struck wherever they thought they'd find gold for which others had labored. They had struck at the initial group of prospectors to leave for the States that season. As they were packing their gold and supplies through White Pass towards Skagway... Sure is good to be going back to the States. I've been up here now under three years. Yeah, folks will be surprised at the gold I'm bringing back. Going to open me a little general store in Frisco and settle down. And get going there. Made my strike right after the last thaw, and then I sold out. <laughs> I've seen enough of White Horse for the time being, I can tell you. Once I get on that boat, I... Hey, look up ahead. Oh, 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 oh. Jumping Juniper. It's a gang of bandits, that's what. Here's where we lose everything we got. Not me. I worked too hard for it. Oh. All right, get the gold off those horses. The next time they struck was at a prospector's cabin on Lake LaBarge near White Horse. Hey, what do you want? Who are All you? All right, get out of the way, you old goat. Oh. Let the rest of you get inside and find his gold. Bring out what we can use and then set fire to the cabin. Now get going. Right. But the climax came when they held up the White Horse Hotel the night when many of the prospectors had come in from miles around to wait for the first river packet to Selkirk. Most of them were sleeping, and their gold and valuables were in the hotel safe. Don't anybody move. This is a holdup. Quick, kid. Gang of robbers. Here goes all our gold. You click. Give me everything that's in the safe. Be quick about it. Yes, sir. I'll give it to you right away. Because of their elusiveness, the gang had become known as the Phantom Gang. The name struck terror in the hearts of most of the hard-working prospectors. And in Whitehorse, the businessmen called a meeting to cope with the situation. Men, I called you to my trading post to discuss the Phantom Gang. We gotta do something about them before they ruin us. Now, to my way of thinking, there's only one man here in the Yukon that can stop the gang and put them where they belong. And that's Sergeant Preston. Along with his dog, King. Now, I sent a letter on the river packet to Selkirk asking Sergeant Preston to come here. And without a doubt, he'll be coming along any day now. Meantime, keep a sharp eye out for any strangers about town. 
so we can give Preston plenty of information to go on. Yes, sir. Him and that dog will find the gang. We'll do all we can to help Preston, Mike. Sure, sure. sir. Now we'll wait till he gets here before we make any other plans. And that's all I got to say right now. Uh, yeah, right. Right. That's a great idea. Two days later, Sergeant Preston and King arrived in Whitehorse. Preston got all the details of the Phantom Gang's actions from Mike Quinn. I tell you, Sergeant, them crooks has got everybody on edge around here. Sure, and you never know when you'll be the next victim of that Phantom Gang. Anybody know how many there are in that gang, Mike? Well, now, some say there's almost a hundred, and others say eight or ten. Between you and me, I'd say there's maybe three or four, Sergeant. That's more like it. I'll make inquiries around town and find out all I can. Go to the hotel, Sergeant. That's where the gang made the last hole up. They were all on horses. I see. Well, they won't be able to use horses much longer. About time for winter to hit. That's right. Give us one good blizzard, and them crooks will have to give up their horses and use dogs. Yes, that should be easier to track them then. I'll ride on down to the hotel, Mike. See you later. One King. So long, Sergeant. <laughs> Goodbye, King. <laughs> Steady there, fella. Hello, now. Sergeant Preston rode the short distance to the cafe and reined up. Oh, there. Oh, easy. Come on, King. Maybe we can find out something in here. Well, hi there, Sergeant Preston. Glad to see you again. Hello, Hello boys. Hello, hi there, Sergeant. Hello, Fred. What can I do for you? I'm here trying to get some information. Sure. What do you want to know? Going on down to the hotel to ask about the robbery that took place there, but I thought I'd stop here first and see if you could tell me anything about the Phantom Gang. Well, isn't much I can tell you, Sergeant. All I know is they seem to strike when the iron's hot. They've got the whole town worried. You can bet on that. I can understand that. Now, look, Fred. Keep your eyes open for any strangers that might look suspicious. Let me know. I've come here from Selkirk in response to a note I received from Mike Quinn. I haven't much to go on in hunting down that gang. They're uh, sure a slippery lot. They won't be easy to catch up with. That's right, sir. I don't expect it to be easy, but I'm going to keep at it until I do run them down. Going on down to the hotel now, but I'll come back shortly and talk to some of your men. One of you might say something that'll give me a clue to start on. Well, let's get going, King. <laughs> Meantime, in an old cabin on the shore of Lake Labarge... A heavy set man looked up as he heard hoofs stopping outside. Uh, must be bird. Well, where's Jim and Red? This cafe in Whitehorse, Liz. I thought I told those fools to stay out of town. Next thing you know, somebody will get away. Ah, let them alone. We can't take chances. Lots of strangers come through there this time of year. Packet boat from Selkirk brought in some new prospectors. Well, if those two get loose tongues and say something out of the way, I don't know. They know better than that. Stop worrying. What brought you back so soon? Well, I got to thinking, Les. <coughs> Those new prospectors that come in on the packet have been spending a lot of money at the trading post for supplies and stuff. Well? Be a good time to hit there, I was thinking. Uh, maybe you're right, Bird. What do you know about the layout at the trading post? Well, I've been in there several times lately. Between six and seven, there aren't many customers there. We could easily pull a robbery then. Yeah, maybe we could. Uh, maybe uh, tomorrow night would be a good time. Packet boat goes back up the river the following morning. Last trip of the season. Good. We'd have to get out of this cabin anyhow before winter sets in. That's right. Hey, sounds like Red and Jim coming now. Yeah. Wonder what brought them back. Well... I didn't expect you back until evening. Here we found out something. Come to tell you, Les. Yeah. What is it? Yeah, what's the big news, Red? He's a Mountie in town. There's a big dog with him. It's a Sergeant Preston <laughs> we heard about. <laughs> Sergeant Preston, a white horse, you say? That's right. He come in on the packet from Selkirk. He was in the cafe a while ago asking questions. Uh, that's not so good. Ah, uh, we've run into Mounties before, Les. What are you worrying about? I guess you haven't heard too much about that particular Mountie, but I have. Preston and that dog of his are dynamite. Uh, that's what I heard. The barkeep said Preston's here to hunt down the Phantom Gang. And that's us, don't forget. He hasn't got any line on us. We always covered part of our faces. And nobody can identify us. Yeah, that's right. Our horses are ordinary looking, like several others in town. Yeah, what you say is true, Bert. Are you but going I... to let him be in there, scare us out of pulling that trading post job? We'd get plenty there. A trading post? You thinking of robbing that? Why not? It'd be easy. 
Like I was telling Liz, that trading post is doing a landslide business since the packet come in. Yeah, it has. Liz, I say let's do as we plan. And we can pull stakes and take the packet to Selkirk. We'll hold up for the winner. Well, it's all right with me. We'll be taking an awful chance, though. Not with the idea I have in mind to get that money and dog out of the way. I'll just make your plans to rob the trading post. You leave the money to me. The following day, the crooks made their plans. All right, Bert. What's your plan to get the money and dog away from town? Yeah, and it better be good. We can't take any chances. I'll listen and I'll tell you. Go ahead, we're listening. Now, we'll clear out right now. Taking the stuff we want to carry along with us. Then what? We'll set fire to the cabin. Then we'll light out for town. Splitting up and riding in one at a time. But what about the money? I'm getting to that, Red. I'll go find the money. Acting all upset. Tell him the Phantom Gang has raided my cabin out here. Him and the dog will come out to investigate. I get it. While they're wasting their time out here, we rob the trading post. Yeah, and... that's it, Liz. After we rob the trading post, we'll separate. Then we'll go to the boat one at a time, making sure we're all on it by sailing time in the morning. Yeah, that Mountie and dog are good at tracking, though. Suppose they find it. just dropped a zero outside. That ground's frozen hard. It'll be tough tracking anyone on it. Bert's right about that. All right. Let's get packed up, and then we'll fire the cabin. Yeah. <coughs> now, come on, let's get this. All right, Bert, come on. Later that afternoon, Bert rode hurriedly up to the cafe and dismounted. Oh, oh, there. Ho, oh, oh, boy. Oh. Hey, hey, has anyone seen that Bonnie? Sergeant Preston? Here I am. What's happening? Oh, gosh, I, I'm sure glad I found you here, Sergeant. What's the matter? The, the Phantom Gang. I'm a prospector. They raided my cabin. What? Took all I had and burned it down. The gang struck again. You're lucky to be alive, mister. That's right. You got away from them. I, I saw them coming. I went out and hid back in the cabin until they left. Then, then I came here to find you. Oh, oh. Steady, fella. Get this man a bit of brandy, somebody. <laughs> now, listen, fella. Where was your cabin located? The south. The south end of Lake LaBarge. I'll go right out there. Come on, gang. We'll continue our story in just a moment. Know who I am? I am a magician. Yes, on this empty table before me, by merely waving my magic wand, I shall produce a tiger. Presto, magic, look. And now I shall instantly change this most ferocious animal of the cat family into the tamest. Presto, magic, look. And now for the greatest feat of all. On the table are two bowls, cereal bowls. You see, they're empty. In my right hand, I have two packages. Big red and blue packages. Now, in a twinkling, you shall see the most delicious breakfast treat on earth. A bowl brim full of Quaker Pop wheat or Quaker Pop rice. The ready-to-serve breakfast cereals shot from guns. Yes, fellas and girls, there's no beating this eating. For breakfast, enjoy Quaker Pop wheat and Quaker Pop rice topped with milk and your favorite fruit. These giant king-sized kernels of premium wheat or rice are shot from guns to make them bigger and better tasting, to make them crisp and tender as nuts in November. Best of all, you don't have to be a magician to enjoy wheat or rice shot from guns morning after morning. Simply ask Mom right now to order these famous big red and blue Quaker packages. Look for the smiling Quaker man on the front. He's your guarantee that you're getting the original, the one and only... Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Now to continue our story. Believing what had been told to him by the crook Bert, Sergeant Preston and King hurriedly left the cafe. The Mountie stopped a moment and looked at Bert's slathered horse. Oh, that must be the horse that prospector rode into town, King. Well. I'm out up. I'll go out there to investigate. Steady, fella. Let's go, King. One fella. By the time Sergeant Preston and King arrived at the smoldering cabin, the sky was heavily overcast with a threat of snow. It had taken the best part of an hour to get there, 
And as Preston dismounted, King stood panting from the long run. What a run you had, King. Now, come on, boy. We'll have a look around. Well, did a good job of burning down the cabin, all right. Practically nothing left of it. The prospector was lucky to get away. The last raid they made out here, the Phantom Gang not only burned down the cabin, they killed the owner. He said he hid behind the cabin. No outbuildings back there. What is it, fellow? Oh, I guess you've caught a scent you recognize. Probably that prospector's horse that you were near him in town. Well, fellow, I guess what? Wait a minute. His horse. The gang would have seen it. If it had been near the cabin, they certainly wouldn't have left the horse. In fact, they'd have known the man was close by and would have hunted him down. Come on, fellow, hurry. What I think's true, King, we've been badly fooled. Steady, fellow. Come along, King. Get there. Come on now. Back in Whitehorse, it was supper time, and the usual hangers-on at the trading post had left to eat. Mike Quinn was alone behind the counter. Uh, sure, and this the last good day I'll be having this season, no doubt, till the packet boat starts running again. <laughs> well, might as well fix myself a bite to eat. As Mike started toward the back room, the front door opened and four <laughs> men... Hey. Mike's heart sank as he saw the handkerchief-covered faces and the drawn guns. Great sense. There's a phantom gang itself. Reach, mister. Don't make a move. Sure, and I'm reaching almost to the ceiling, as you can readily see. Keep him covered, Les. I'll get to the safe. Right. Come on, boys. All right. It's my misfortune not to have locked the safe with all the gold I've took in this day. Shut up. Hurry up, Bert. Yeah. Somebody might come in. Yeah, I'm watching the door. If they do, it's their bad luck. Yeah, hey, we got it all. Now let's get out of here. Sure, and if Sergeant Preston and King was to come along, you'd not be leaving. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. They aren't even in town. They're out hunting the Phantom Gang. I'm in. <laughs> Ready, Bert? Yeah, let's get going. You won't get far, I can tell you that. You won't give the alarm, mister. This settles you. Oh! All right, come on. Let's beat it quick. Hurry it up, boys. Come on. Now we'll separate. I'll meet you all on the boat. All right. now get going. Get up. Get up. Get up. Within the hour, Sergeant Preston and King arrived in town and stopped at the cafe. Oh, there. Steady, fellow. Come on, King. Hey, I'll tell you what, is it? Well, here's Sergeant Preston now. We've been looking for you, Sergeant. What's happened? Plenty. Phantom gang robbed the trading post and shot Mike Quinn. What? How is Mike? He got a slug in the shoulder. He'll be all right. I'll go right over there. Come along, King. <laughs> A short time later, Preston had heard the story from Mike. Yeah, they was brazen as I'll get out, Sergeant. That be what? Sorry I was away from town when it happened, Mike. I told them if you and King were about, they wouldn't get away with it. But one of them spoke up and said you was away from town chasing the Phantom Gang. Huh? Then all of them laughed. One of them said that, eh? That's right, he did. It was a big man, sort of. I see. King and I are going to take a look outside, Mike. Come on, fella. <laughs> Okay, what I think is right, it's up to you. Look around, boy. See what you can find out here. No wonder they laughed, getting me to fall for a trick like that. What is it, King? Find something? Must be that horse's scent again, eh? All right, boy, find him. After him, King. Get there, fella! For some time, Preston followed King as the great dog ran before him, sniffing the ground and barking intermittently. Preston was puzzled by the route the gang had seemed to have taken. The trail of Bert's horse led the Mountie and dog in a great circle around the town. Soon snow began to fall, and then Preston noticed the imprint of the hoofs of only one horse. He drew rein for a moment. Oh, there. Oh, I don't quite get this. Wait a minute, King. We don't want to go on another wild goose chase. Well, if I got one of the gang, I'll be able to get a lead on the others. Go on, King. Get up, fella. Meantime, Bert, the outlaw, had ridden in a great circle far from town. When the snow began to fall, he reined up for a moment and looked back. Then he sat listening. If that Monty should by any chance be following one of our trails, this snow will show up the tracks. I guess I'd better go on. He don't seem to be coming after me anyway. Get up. Get up. On and on through the cold Yukon night... Bert determined to make sure Sergeant Preston didn't find out where they were going to meet. 
The wind-driven snow blew into his face and clung to his clothing, causing him to ride slower than he had been going. Once again, Bert drew rein to rest his horse and to listen. Oh, oh there. Oh, oh. I guess I'll soon reach where I'm hidden safe and up. Hey. The wind was blowing now from behind, since Bert had turned back in the direction of town. And as he sat listening, the expression changed on his face as he heard the distant barking of a dog. A dog? Maybe it's Preston's dog trailing me. It must be. I'll ride up ahead of that ridge and wait. If it is, I'll gun the Monty down and light out before the dog can get to me. All right, get up. Get up there. Sergeant Preston rode along behind King, who, sniffing and barking, still followed the trail of the crook ahead. Suddenly, as he approached an icy ridge that loomed up a short distance ahead, a shot rang out. Oh, oh there, steady. King, King, come here. Hold himself behind that ridge, fella. He's got us in the open, but because of the snow, he can't see us too well. It's too close for comfort. We'll go after him, King. Steady. On there, get up. Riding forward at a fast pace, Sergeant Preston and King hoped to get to a point where they could see the man they were hunting. But suddenly, striking an icy stretch of ground, Preston's horse slipped and fell. A hard fall on the exposed ice stunned Preston for a few moments. When he regained his senses, King was licking his face and whining. Oh, that was quite a fall, fellow. I see my horse is up and seems to be all right. By this time, I guess that crook's going on. Steady, fellow. All right, King, we'll try to trail him once more. After him, boy. Get up, fellow! It was dawn, and the cold, gray brightness of the Yukon night gave way to dull, leaden skies and light-falling snow as Sergeant Preston and King approached the end of the trail they were following. I might have known. The trail leads right back to the waterfront in White Quiet, King. Quiet, fella. The last boat of the season for Selkirk. Come on there. Get up now. Realizing the whistle he had heard was the warning whistle from the boat, meaning it would be leaving in a few minutes, Preston urged his horse into a fast gait and soon reached the gangplank. Hold there, hold there, steady up. Come on, King, hurry. King and Preston hurried up the gangplank and once aboard went to the captain in the wheelhouse. Captain. Oh, Sergeant Preston. Captain, I have reason to believe the Phantom Gang's aboard your boat. The Phantom Gang? Yes. Did you have any passengers come aboard during the night? Yep. Seems like there are about four of them that came aboard at different times. But they're bunking together in one big cabin. Oh? Show me that cabin, will you? Sure. But if they are the Phantom Gang, you might run into trouble. They're in cabin five right down the deck in the port side. Thanks. I'll find it. Come along, King. <laughs> in the largest cabin on the boat, Bert with Les and Red were sitting on one of the hey, bunks you know, counting the gold they had taken from the trading Les. post. Yeah, when a signal knock came yeah, to the door. Yeah. Hey, that's Jim. Let him in, somebody. Yeah, I will. Come on in, Jim. Hey, Les. He just come aboard. I saw him. Who just come aboard? What are you talking about, Jim? Mountie and his dog. What? Sergeant Preston. Holy smoke. How did he find out? What are we going to do? I'll take it easy. He doesn't have anything on us. He'd recognize me, though. So what if he does? Tell him he decided to go to Selkirk like others are doing. Get that money out of sight, quick. All right. Yeah. All right, hurry it up. Stick the bags under the mattress. All right, Chris. Hey, what if the money comes here to this cabin? Just sit tight and let me and Bert talk to him. What? Hey, that must be him. Sit down on your bunk and keep quiet. Open the door, Bert. Right. Well, Sergeant Preston. And his dog. Well, hello, Sergeant. Just the man I want to see. Come on in. Quiet, King. Well, traveling with friends, eh? That's right. I, I decided after being burned out to go to Selkirk while I had the chance. I thought they took all you had. Oh, sure. Sure they did. I, I borrowed the money. I see. But how do you account for the fact that King and I trailed you from the trading post after it was held up? Oh, well, uh, I was in there just before the robbery. Seems to me you took quite a long route to reach the boat. All you had to do was go about a quarter of a mile down the street. Well, I, I was afraid the Phantom Gang would be watching me, Stop so... Stop lying. I... How could they know who you were or what you looked like? If, as you told me, you hid out while they robbed and burned your cabin. Uh, I wasn't taking any chances. One other thing. You rode your horse from your cabin to the cafe to tell me the news. Why didn't the gang see your horse outside your cabin? Well, I, I wondered about that myself, sir. You're not leaving huh? town, mister, and neither are your friends till I find out a few things. Hey, put up the gun. 
You don't have anything on this, Mummy. Hey, the dog! Get away from there, you mutt! What's that, King? Huh? Edge of a money bag hanging from underneath that hey, mattress. Get away from there! The money bag's in the trading post. King watched as his master turned back the mattress and looked at the loot hidden underneath. The big dog at the same time saw Les reach for his gun, and the great dog sprang. Get him off me! He got me by the wrist! Reach for the Don't move! Hunting! Down, fella! You won't get me! Get him! No, I don't have to leave. Down, fella! Watch him, boy! I'll fix that mutt! No, you don't! Go! My ankle! Anyone else want to try anything? I'll get over there and be quiet. Going on in here. Yes, Captain, you oh, did. King and I are having a bit of trouble with the Yo, Phantom Gang. The Phantom Gang? Great day. He tackled them alone, too. Are they really the Phantom Gang, Sergeant? Yes. Those money bags from the trading post there are proof enough. You'll be sailing without these four passengers, Captain. Good. I don't like to have cooks and killers about the Yukon Bell. We'll weigh anchor as soon as you take them ashore, Sergeant. I'll get them ashore right now, Captain. If you'll give me a couple of men to help me take them to jail and... Mike Quinn's money bags back to the trading post. Sure. A couple of the boat hands would be glad to help. I want to cast off. There's a real blizzard blowing up out there. Yes, I know. But you'll make it to Selkirk before the ice sets in. Oh, uh, you can carry the news that the so-called Phantom Gang's been caught. Well, it was a brave thing you did. Coming into this cabin alone, feeling sure you were going to face the Phantom Gang. I wasn't alone, Captain. You weren't? Who else came with you? King. It was that mutt that kept us from giving you a bullet. King resents being called a mutt. Now, look, get him away from me, will you? I don't like the way he looks at me. Easy, it. King. Oh. Back, boy. <laughs> King knows a crook when he sees one, I take it. He sure does. This time he rounded up four of them. So thanks to King, the case of the Phantom Gang is closed. Hey, fella? <laughs> In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's program. Here's how Mother can make your family a breakfast-happy family. Just have her treat you to delicious, ready-to-serve Quaker puffed wheat or Quaker puffed rice topped with milk and fruit. With little fuss or bother, and in practically no time at all, here's a tasty, inexpensive, deluxe family breakfast. I'll bet Mom goes for this, too. For added health benefits, natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron are restored in Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. What's more, they're never sold in bags or bulk. To get the original crisp, fresh wheat or rice shot from guns, always look for the big red and blue Quaker packages. Ask your grocer for Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice tomorrow. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puff Wheat and Quaker Puff Rice, the breakfast cereal shot from gun. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the adventure of The Call of Duty. This thrilling adventure started out with a gunfight in the Dawson Cafe and ended in a lonely cabin on the Yukon Trail. It was there that a girl and a boy played a desperate game of wits with two killers. And it was there that King and I arrived to find the scene set for murder. The events of that night led to an exciting climax. Be sure to hear this exciting story Monday. Till then, this is Jay Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. So long. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Yes, the giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Still less than one penny a serving. Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is ABC, the American Broadcasting Company.